So it's hard to believe that a thin sheet of slippery polymer is all that separates a resin mess from the rest of your printer. I am talking, of course, about FEP sheets, which is a common staple in LCD masking printers. In this video, I'm going to tell you everything you ever wanted to know about FEP sheets, but was afraid to ask. My name's Yasu. I run a little 3D print prop shop called Hero Creations, where I make replica props, costumes from your favorite movies, television shows, and video games. Let's get into it. So first off, what is FEP? FEP is short for fluorinated ethylene propylene, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, sorry if I butchered it, and is in the same generalized family as other uh, commonly known household chemical names such as Teflon or PTFE, which is familiar as PTFE tubing that is used in FDM printers. It was invented by the DuPont Chemical Company and marketed as a strong and chemically resistant plastic that could be used as liner or coating in a variety of different industrial and commercial applications. Unlike Teflon and PTFE, FEP sheets have the added unique properties of being almost completely crystal clear and resistant to UV light, such as you know, from LEDs or sunlight. With properties like these, it makes perfect sense as to why FEP sheets are so commonly used in the resin printing space right now. It's the tough and low stretch properties of extremely thin sheets of FEP that makes it so useful in resin printing because it allows the cured part to release off the LCD, staying on the build plate, without the need for a motorized tilting mechanism or sliding mechanism that other resin printers have dabbled in in their designs and are technically considerably a lot more complicated. Now you might be wondering, why use such a thin sheet of plastic? Why not use a thicker piece of FEP film to lower the risk of a, a, a puncture or a catastrophic leak all over your LCD. Now, while that is true that you can reduce the risk of leaks and other issues by using thicker FEP sheets, the thicker the FEP sheet, the lower the UV transmission rate, that is the ability for the UV to get through the plastic, thus creating a refraction and ultimately lowering the overall resolution of your prints on the XY axis. So it's almost like using a lower resolution screen, which depending on your application, like if you're doing low detail, smooth objects that don't need a lot of XY um, detail, it's a valid trade-off. But if you're working in jewelry or mi tabletop miniature applications, where those are your prints, where you need very fine details that you want to capture, fabric or hairs or very just intricate lattices, then you definitely want to get every bit of detail possible. Plus, a thicker FEP sheet that will refract light more and create a, a blurry shape uh, in each mask is a less attractive option. So that's one of those things that is up to you to figure out what are you comfortable with in terms of risk of leaks versus how much detail you're willing to sacrifice. That being said, even with a thin 100 or 120 micron uh, FEP liner, you can take a few different steps to greatly reduce the risk of a catastrophic puncture and leak. These are tips I figured out from my own experiences. The first thing you will want to do after every single print, regardless of success or fail, is filter your resin. Because after every print, there's always a chance that your vat has been contaminated with little bits of partially cured resins that, if left in the vat, can be pressed into the FEP film, uh, potentially piercing the FEP as well as damaging the LCD screen if it's a large enough piece. In my experience with my own prints, as well as helping troubleshoot other people's uh, resin printing issues, this is usually the most common way that FEP sheets get pierced and leak. 
And remember, this is in general a good practice for also preserving the life of your LCD screens because if there's enough pressure placed on the LCD screen, it will cause the um, one of the layers known as uh, the lower polarizer on the screen to um, delaminate, that is, uh, peel partially off of the, uh, the rest of the screen, preventing the LCD from working properly, which translates into a black spot on your screen, also known by many as a dead pixel. Now, alternately, after every print, you'll definitely want to also inspect your build plate, make sure there's no rough spots or burrs where you might have been super rough in um, taking a print off the plate. And, and mind you, if you did uh, have a burr, just simply sand it down with a fine grit of sandpaper and make a note to yourself to never be that rough with your build plate. And then after that, you'll want to re-level your plate because when you've handled your plate that much, the bed level can change slightly, which can affect uh, and potentially damage your FEP sheet if it's too close or have it adhesion issues if it's too far away. So it doesn't hurt, again, to just re-level your plate after every single print as a normal maintenance practice. Now, if you have a fail due to a print not sticking to a bill plate and instead choosing to be stubborn and sticking to the FEP sheet and the LCD, resist the urge to try to fish around for that piece of cured resin uh, with a scraper or some other tool because you risk slicing open your FEP sheet and causing a leak. Instead, glove up um, and use your fingers to kind of work around the edges of that cured part and peel it up. If it's particularly stubborn and doesn't want to come out, take your other hand, push on the edges from the, uh, on the, um, the outside of the FEP sheet, so the underneath, and peel it up. You should have no problems getting rid of any cured parts. Nothing will be a, like a permanent stick. During this step, of course, it's a good excuse to, of course, as I mentioned before, drain and filter your resins and make sure that no other uh, partially cured pieces has uh, escaped your notice. So in terms of general maintenance, FEP sheets are pretty low fuss that you don't really have to do much with them until you either have to clean them when you're changing resins and you don't want to cross-contaminate the type or the color, or when you actually finally have to change your FEP due to a leak, or it's just having issues uh, getting your print to stick to the build plate. Cleaning is pretty simple. All you need to do is drain out your resin into a container, filtered of course, um, then you'll take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, about 90% or greater, swish it around in the vat, uh, trying to capture as much of the, um, the, the, re the leftover resin, pour out that isopropyl alcohol, and then use paper towels or other um, wipes to mop up the excess. After that, you should be good to go. If you have an ultrasonic cleaner, you can actually expedite this entire process by putting the whole FEP sheet into an ultrasonic cleaner filled with either isopropyl alcohol or some sort of commercial cleaner like Simple Green or uh, Mean Green. Within about a minute or two of running the ultrasonic cleaner, you should have a completely sparkly clean vat once the excess uh, cleaning residue evaporates off. When it comes to changing your FEP films, that will vary from printer to printer. So I'd recommend referring to the instruction manual that comes with your uh, printer. At a high level, the process is pretty simple. It's just a matter of unscrewing the bolts, uh, holding the uh, two pieces of um, either metal or plastic that's sandwiching the, uh, the FEP sheet and holding in tension, pulling out the FEP, putting a new one evenly over making sure it's tensioned correctly um, based on the manufacturer's instructions, and then tightening the uh, FEP sheet up in a circular format to ensure an even tension. To wrap up this discussion about FEP sheets, I want to do a quick rapid fire uh, round of observations I've found when it comes to all things FEP. First off, I see a lot of folks in the community 
adding other hydrophobic or nonstick coatings to the FEP to try to add even more nonstick qualities to um, their vats. And I personally think that is unequivocally a terrible idea for one main reason. Remember in the beginning, I said that FEP sheets are a chemically resistant coating, which means nothing's gonna bond or stick to it for very long. So those coatings, those nonstick coatings you just put onto a plastic that is known for nonstick qualities, it's not gonna hang on there very often. And in the best case scenario, it's just gonna get uh, absorbed into the resin and removed slowly as the resin's cured and you know in the normal printing process. Worst case scenario, that nonstick coating is going to get stuck to the next thing it can actually stick to, the build plate, which is something you absolutely do not want to have a, um, a nonstick property on. So in general, I think adding something like Rain-X or waxes uh, is a terrible idea. Additionally, sometimes some of those coatings are not completely clear when it comes to allowing UV light through and might actually act as a UV blocker. So you definitely don't want to mess with that because, again, that's going to affect your ability to print things. When it comes to storing extra vats that are not actively used in your printer, make sure they're kept in a dark place where light can't reflect from underneath obviously, and make sure the surface that you have the FEP, uh, the vat sitting on, is smooth. Early on in my resin printing days, I made the mistake of leaving my vats on a rough, unsanded plywood table and got a splinter for the FEP sheet for my trouble. You can imagine that was quite the mess, and I made sure to never make that mistake ever again. And finally, for the love of everything that is good in the world, do not, under any circumstances, take your FEP sheet or a, a vat filled with LCD or DLP resin into, and expose it to direct sunlight because you will get a, uh, a reaction with the, uh, the photo initiator that is so strong and intense that the uh, resin will literally flash boil and get hot enough to potentially damage a plastic vat and of course melt the FEP sheet. And let me tell you that burning or melted FEP sheet smells absolutely off. And that is everything I know about FEP sheets. I hope you found it interesting and that you learned something. Feel free to comment down below if you have any more questions about FEP sheets or anything I might have brought up in this video, as well as sharing any tips and things that you found useful in your resin printing in regards to um, FEP sheets and vats. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video interesting, it would really help uh, spread the, uh, the word of this video by hitting that like button and sharing it, as well as doing a subscribe if you want to see more resin related content. If you didn't like this video, feel free to double tap that thumbs down button to emphasize the point. Anyways, that's it for today. I'm going to see you in the next video and happy printing.